What is going on everyone, Commodore Laz here, bringing to you guys a One Piece discussion. And normally most of the time I love to do these discussions, just talking on my own, discussing about the pinnacle of our literature, the greatest adventure story ever told. This time around, I didn't want to do this alone because it's for a topic for a character, a faction in the story that I love talking about with this individual every single time we get into a call and the time felt like it was right since we were on a break week so ladies and gentlemen king recon my man my brother my tag team partner is here today to talk about the greatness the greatest adventure story ever told recon how are you oh boy laz my good brethren it has been well over 274 years since we've talked about monkey d dragon and the boys so it is finally time for us to be here fittingly over a phone call to talk about the most important phone call in, all of in the history yeah. of this manga. <laughs> Absolutely. So, I'm down. I'm down and let's let's get right into it. Yo, I'm excited. I was, isn't it a crazy prelude though? Like we're, we're going to have like a conversation talking about what could be the most important phone call in the history of manga. We're not talking like the history. Like, the history. You can, anyone can bring up right now in the comments a phone call that might be the most important. There might be one Detective Conan that might be escaping Dude. my mind, possibly, <laughs> potentially. Bro, <laughs> when I tell you, whenever, the moment you said phone call, the first thing I thought of was, Watch out. I was like, yes. am I missing something? <laughs> am I missing something? I don't know if we'll bleep that out just in case if there's no Conan's <laughs> one, but thank God, but thank God we have it, it could. <laughs> thank God we That's have right. it, it could. That's right. If not just like bleep it out oh yeah absolutely yeah definitely that's gonna be the one <laughs> <laughs> but yeah no honestly i mean we're gonna be talking about what is supposed to be the most important phone call in this entire manga and possibly in all of manga like next week could be finally what we're waiting on for so long recon like ramifications the story really moving in a direction that's gonna gear us up for the final saga that awaits us right. and that's looking to be built up right now with the mm -hmm. revolutionary army at the forefront it's like it's crazy right like we've wanted yeah. we've been talking about this we've been talking about this for a long time like in regards to dragon what his plans are going to be till like five in the morning every time we get in a call but mm -hmm. now it feels mm -hmm. like oda's finally about to go ahead and do that and yeah. obviously this isn't something that just happened right now there's been a lot of build up to this moment happening we've had you know, the Revolutionary Army just basically getting into Mary Jawa, trying to get ready to declare war. The whole thing that's been going down with Kuma and the recovery mission for him. You know, it's going to be life or death for Sabo and the rest of the Revolutionary Commanders to him now basically being, you know, MIA or unknown status or mm -hmm. uh, we don't know. Like, whatever is going to happen yeah. with Sabo, we don't know. And that's then right. the recent chapter in the manga, we've had Kuma now being back at Kamabaka Kingdom with Dragon and all of them. Dragon talking about that if Cobra actually was killed by Sabo, it doesn't matter what the reason is, doesn't matter what excuse he may have to mm -hmm. justify things, but he is willing to put a can of whip ass on him. And Dude. if that happens, like that's crazy to think. But it's like, bro, and, well, NWO Wolfpack versus Black and White, baby. That's, that's gonna. That's be what I mean. Stuff, it's like the NWO know? really is about to do this. Like this is crazy. Like this, I, I mean. I, Put a glass soda, like if he is a WCW fan, God help him. But you know, <laughs> but the fact that he understands good booking in in a place yeah. where good booking maybe doesn't originate as much as it should, that yeah. is something that is fascinating. So I did want to bring mm -hmm. you on here just to discuss, you know, what we see possibly coming out of this situation in regards to mm -hmm. what's happened with Sabo, what we're gonna get from this phone call, how Dragon's going yeah. to react to it, and then basically where we go from here. So let's just start off with the phone call. What do you think okay. he's about to be said? You know, I've been thinking about this a lot, and I, as a Metal Gear fan, as uh, both of us are, mm -hmm. I I always love those uh, conversations that have a lot more subtext, right? Where we have to read between the lines. And I do believe, regardless of what Sabo is about to say, whether he is purposefully going to be antagonizing the Revolutionary Army so that they don't follow him, maybe that's one of his plans. Maybe there is going to be some sort of civil war type of conflict between the Revolutionary Army, uh, the, the commanders within there, right? Individuals who believe in Sabo, individuals who don't. But what I would like to see out of this phone call in particular is for Sabo to speak in terms that 
only the Revolutionary Army like commanders. Like a code or something. And, you, like, know, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like some sort of code that only they can understand. So that way, let's just say, right, they say like Alpha, Nine, or Delta, Alabasta, Fishman Island. You know what I'm saying? They're the it's only like, ones that can get it because we know the Marines are intercepting this call right now. So like exactly. anything that's said, it's going to be said in the live. Exactly. Like, yeah. So it's 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 legitimately going to be a scenario where they know the marines are listening in they're going to try to misdirect the marines while also getting the revolutionary army you know ready for wherever it is the sabo is going so let's just say if sabo says uh alpha nine or delta amazon lily that means he's mm -hmm. actually in charlie whatever yeah, uh marine yeah, yeah. fort or something right like, <laughs> yeah, this yeah, is yeah. what i meant so i i'm excited to see that like how is Oda going to use his phone call to misdirect the Marines, to make them move, to make a Kainu move? Or are they going to be smart about this and be like, oh, uh, like we cut over to a Kainu because in this chapter, we obviously see the dragon and a Kainu are similar in certain ways. So mm -hmm. is, is a Kainu going to be like, oh, man, like, do they really think we're, we're going to fall for that? Those idiots like, oh, we know exactly where they're going. And yeah, so yeah, yeah. I want to see that 4D chess happening between the Revolutionary Army and Marines starting with this chapter. And um. But what did you think about that Kodak call? Like the potential of this Kodak call? This is about to be crazy, man. I mean, because that's the thing, because obviously we have a lot of things that still need to be factored in. You know, did Sabo have some kind of play in the whole thing of Cobra dying? I mean, me and you, we've yeah. seen enough stories where it's like fabrication is a big thing with these organizations yeah. trying to put the blame yeah. on someone else. When we do know yeah. that the Goro Saban talking about a great cleansing, it might end up yeah. starting with not just Cobra, but even King Riku, too, who was with Cobra mm -hmm. at the time. So that's another mm -hmm. character stats. We don't know what's going on. But another yeah. character of importance too is Vivi, who right yeah. now, as far as we know, is gone unknown. Like we know Kuma yeah. has been taken back to Kamabaka Kingdom. Vivi yeah. has gone missing. I am yeah. on the assumption right now that Vivi more than likely is with Sabo. Is with Sabo. Yeah. And we still have another character too that we're unaware of where exactly is going oh, on with them. And, bring that's, her up. And, that, and that's my girl, Julie Bonnie. That's Julie Bonnie. And that's <laughs> the thing because we have characters of all these connections to Kuma with the revolutionaries and Bonnie. Yeah. And it's like, so yes. what does that mean now? Is that all three of them are together, Vivi, Sabo, so. and Bonnie? And if they so. are, what location could they be in if you have to figure that out? Like, where so, would you say so they'd be? Uh, last thing about it like this, right? With Jewelry Bonnie, you can literally escape any situation because no one knows what you looked like at a certain age. And of course, no one can see the future. Right. So let's just say Jewelry Bonnie and, and Vivi, because I still don't know if we're, if we're, if we're even going to see Sabo. Like it could be like a Denon and Mushi thing, like Blackbeard back in Dressrosa. Mm -hmm. We only see him to the Denon Mushi, but we don't get to see where he is, what he looks like at that time. Like we only got to see Blackbeard's post time script design like 200 chapters after that chapter dropped. So in Sabo's case, it's like we might not even see him. But if we do see him, I would not be surprised if Sabo's like whenever he's talking, he either sounds younger or older, because I do believe that Jewelry Bonnie right now either made him. Can you imagine Sabo the Chin Badger? Like we see him yeah. next time and he's just rocking the nasty Chin Badger. Vivi yeah. looks like 10 years older. And that's because Bonnie has aged them either up or younger to ensure that they're safe. And um, and I think regardless of whether they go. Whether they're still, I, I highly doubt they're in, they're in Alabasta, but regardless of where they are, whether they're trying to meet up with uh, Poseidon and Fishman Island, or whether they're on the way to one or they're currently on the sea, or they're maybe the right out of headquarters, wherever it is the Sabo is, because mm -hmm. at this point he has so much cloud, he could be anywhere. He, next time we see him, I don't think we're going to see him as a Sabo we know, right? That we're going to see this man, especially if Sabo dies at the end of the story, this is going to be Oda's opportunity to show us what it looks like in the future. So how cool yeah. would that be for him to utilize Jewelry's, Jewelry Bonnie's abilities um, to, to the fullest extent? Now, if I have to pick just one location less, and you mm -hmm. know where I'm going with this, it's mm -hmm. got to be the Sorbet Kingdom, bro. Yeah, that's the thing, it's, yeah. it's, 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 it's got to be the Sorbet Kingdom, dude. Like, that, that would be an interesting place, because if I'm not mistaken, that's somewhere in the south, if I'm not mistaken. I'm mistaken. So we'll, yeah. have, we'll have a, an edit in there just to make sure that it's in the same place. <laughs> but uh, yeah. it, it, it would be interesting, though, to see if that is uh, the location. But given the fact that, I mean, we are, like, in the new world and stuff and everything, for them to kind of go backwards. But it does feel like, mm -hmm. in some ways, that's kind of where the story is kind of going in at one moment, where, yeah, we've gone from the Grand Line Paradise, and now it's like we're going to the new world. But once you get to the very end, like it was said through Crocus uh back at uh whiskey peak or you know the reverse mountain it's like everything's kind of like going going back to like the very beginning in a way so even though this is the final saga that doesn't mean we're kind of forgetting the roots and then there's some parts of the roots that we didn't really get to 
So, yeah. I, I mean, it depends, though, because, again, the way you look at the map of One Piece, there's so many locations where you're like, okay, that makes sense to be there, that makes sense to be there. Yeah. Wait, why is that there? You know what I mean? So, yeah. it really yeah. depends on what uh, Oda does with Sorbet Kingdom there. But, but it, it could also be, if Kuma slapped them out of there, then he, he could have just been like, I'm taking you guys home. Like, well, I'm slapping you well, guys Well, that house. is a fascinating part, too, because it's like, you know, with Kuma, we know that uh, he's... Uh, being back there in the commands of the revolutionary army he's talking about dragon mm -hmm. saying you know i'm yours the commands i know the translations yeah. and the scans said i'm yours master but let's yeah. be honest i don't think kuma's ever saying like master the dragon like there's mm -hmm. a respect but i don't mm -hmm. see kuma doing that even though mm -hmm. ivankov did say he was a little bit different back then with the smile and stuff so maybe there's yeah. parts about kuma that we're not being told the full truth on oh, but, that's for sure but if he is still yeah. capable of using the transportation of getting them out of areas and all that I think it would, wouldn't it make more sense. Like, I, it depends too, because it's like with Kuma, we don't know if like you know they were able to just catch a plane or like you know they were just able to catch like a ship on mm -hmm. off the coast of Marijuana just to be able to go there. Yeah. I mean, it's just a high place going from the Red Line to yeah, go there. That's true. You know, I think it was Karasu. I think that was the name of the guy from the Revolutionary yeah, Army, Karasu. where he has like the yep. cro with the crows the and everything. So crows. yeah, so yeah. I mean, they could have used that possibly. I mean, I pray for those crows carrying Kuma, because my God, can you imagine yeah. the, those things are gonna be <laughs> dead? Bro, bro, they, they gotta, they they gotta carry Goat Man, Flame Emperor Sabo, dude. That is they, true. <laughs> they they gotta be prepared for everything. Like their honor in hockey has to be higher than Virgos at that point, dude. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it could be just be army hockey, but my God, hockey or not, the things would be dying for. Hell. <laughs> <laughs> like i love kuma i absolutely love you but it's like my brother i think he could i think he swim <laughs> no, he can swim <laughs> he has the dough yeah, yeah, but, yeah. but but still, even then like yeah. it is it is interesting though because it's like if he has his memories reprogrammed and everything and obviously you know him trying to get back his brain i think now it's kind of like obsolete at this point <laughs> I'm trying to get back his brain <laughs> I mean, can you imagine how crazy that'd be like we lift up that straw hat and there's a brain right there we may there's have a, a plot <laughs> we may have something to work with honestly <laughs> Yo, that'd be a, that'd be a crazy behind plot line, dude. Get Kuma back his brain. Oh Bro, man! In regards to like all the stuff that's happening at the moment. So when we do get this phone call from Salbo when he lets us know what's happening, all that. How do yeah. you see Dragon handling all of this? Like, if you had to pinpoint in his mind when he's hearing what Salbo tells him, whether it's you know I have Vivi with me, I have you know other people here with me and stuff. I'm good. I'm maybe still stuck in Marijuana or I'm on this island or whatever. And he relays the information because Kuma more or less knows all the information that's there. That's why he was asking yeah. uh, Kuma Dragon, like, you know, what was the whole thing going on? But yeah. if you had to step your if you have to step yourself into the minds of Monkey D Dragon in the situation we're in right now, going into this final saga, what moves are you making? I'm doing uh, one of two things, uh, and I and I love how this latest chapter really showed us a little bit more of Dragon's character and how he's, how serious he takes the Revolutionary Army. Like like, this is something if you break the rules, then you're not going to be forgiven, right? right? And I really like that because it's very similar to a Kainu in the way that he handles things as well. Uh, but in Dragon's case, if I'm really trying to look out for Sabo, I am handling that phone call like an angry pops. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yo, son, where are you at? What are you doing? And this is how hard I'm going to spank you when you get home. Yeah. Like, he's, he's, uh, I would be as antagonistic as possible towards Sabo in this, in, in, in this call specifically because the Marines are listening into it. However, <clears throat> in Dragon's case, I feel like rather than, because he is the leader, like we were talking about earlier, and this potentially being a, a, a call filled with subtext and with, uh, you know, little codes where only the only revolutionary army knows. I do feel like he's going to be in command, try to be in command of this conversation. And we're going to see that, that old new gen, you know, Sabo trying to do things his way and dragon trying to do things in his way. And I think it is inevitably, whether it's something that's created out of, um, out of like one of those scenarios where they're they're creating this conflict in order to attempt to throw off the Marines or where there's genuine conflict between the two, Regardless, I want Dragon to stand firm because mm -hmm. this is this has been his baby for years. And we know that he's on the cusp of war against the Celestial Dragons. And yeah. the individual who is currently messing that up at this point in time is Sabo. So I want him to stand as firm as possible while also in this conversation trying to learn and gain as much information. But at the same time, what makes this call so interesting, we were talking about earlier, is 
because somebody's listening in, uh, Dragon can't say, oh, I'm so happy you're alive or oh, that's right or whatever it is. Like he's got to stay as cold hearted or as any like a mysterious Wino Dragon to be. Right, right. So he's he, he, you know what I mean? So I feel like it's going to be so I, that's one of the parts I'm most interested in, especially whenever you look at his, his face in this chapter, that one panel. Where that was a very shaded. brooding face. Like, he's very just like, bro, brooding. you better not, like, screw this up or something. Like Exactly. You know, the fact that Koala did not, like, run away after seeing that face is impressive Le as hell. Like, I just Legit. wanted to put that out there real quick. Like, Legit, dude. Like, a Koala is being able to... To, to keep her knees from buckling in the presence of Dragon's Conqueror's hockey's impressed. It Shout is. out to Koala. Absolutely. Shout out to Koala. <laughs> for real. Shout out to Koala. But no, man. Yeah, like... um. I'm very much in interested in hearing on, uh, on your thoughts because obviously, you know, coming out of Wano, uh, we all, or at least you and I assume, like, yo, Dragon's going straight for him. Like, he's just going straight for the Empty Throne. Like, yo, let's go. Let's have this conversation. But it looks like right now he can't do that because of Sabo. Yeah. So it's like right now he has to take his position as the leader of this army and be like, yo, I got to put my foot down somewhere. You know what I mean? So I, what, what do you what do you think is happening here with uh, with Dragon, bro? So if I had to put myself mostly in the mind of Dragon, but also looking into the perspective of Oda, because we have to also factor in how long we think this conversation is going to go on for. And do yeah. we think that Oda will actually permit us the time where we're going to actually see this play out, but not jump immediately right back to Luffy and them? Because I do feel yeah. like this stuff right here. Again, we don't have the safety net anymore of the next arc's coming off. We'll get an answer yeah. or a breadcrumb there. Yeah. So it's time to yeah. have a loaf of bread with some butter on it. You know what I mean? Like That's, yeah. what, we're, that's what we're here 100%. for. So 100%. I do feel like with Dragon, if Sabo has been captured, because I do think that's a very high possibility. Okay. That's probably what happened. And if he has to talk in codec and stuff and can't really relay the information, like but word by word, like actual like in meanings, because obviously, of course, the Marines are hearing all that. If Dragon realizes that's the case, then I think he actually goes there to invade. Like okay. when you're talking about the Declaration of War, I think he goes in to do that because there okay. may be some information there that Sabo is going to relate to him that may kickstart something else even further. That Dragon knows that if he doesn't get a head start first on, it's going to come yeah. back to bite him afterwards. Like we For know sure. he has all these liberations going on. We also have these things happening too with Sabo now outside of like, you know, in the world where they're kind of looking at him as the Flame Emperor, that he has now a status and stature that is starting to grow in infamy greater than that to Dragon. And yeah. when I look back to the chapter of when Dragon read of the news that Sabo had allegedly, you know, killed Cobra, and this is before we even knew that was going to be the case. But mm -hmm. if Dragon feels like this was something that he could use to kind of cover up the government a little bit and you know you worry about what's going on here with Sabo and stuff and then worry about me afterwards when i sneak in and yeah. go and do my thing but the reaction yeah. of it feels like something went awol and yeah. for that to be the case i'm leaning towards more the Sabo has been captured so if something were to have gone down that means dragon's directly gonna have to go and make a play because if he goes and lets his second in command possibly mm -hmm. be taken out by him from whatever means it could be that's yeah. a huge loss on them. So, and, and in most cases, when you're the leader of the group, if something needs to be taken care of, you're the one that has to step in and go and do that. So, if I really have to, like, you know, go on a limb here and say what I think is going to happen, whether it's in a chapter, the entire one, or maybe within the span of two chapters, I could say if whatever this phone call is and what's being relayed, I think Dragon makes a move immediately to Mary Joa. And whether or not we get that conversation with him and all that happens, mm -hmm. or if we have to break mm -hmm. away to Luffy, which I'm praying mm -hmm. doesn't happen because there's no other time we're going to get this kind of stuff, this yeah. will be the time to do so. So if I'm going to go and put my chips on the table, all the marbles in, and say what mm -hmm. Dragon's going to do, regardless of whatever is being said by Sabo, I think he makes a move now on Mary Joa. I think he That's already good. has the resources now with Kuma coming back. He may have little things here taken care of. Once he knows Sabo's good, I think he goes and makes a play. There's no other time to wait for this move to happen now especially with the great cleansing coming into commission we know blackbeards yeah. are on the move going after something that i mean i'm the assumption it's going to be an ancient weapon possibly you have caribou mm -hmm. walking around now with information on two of the ancient weapons possibly we know the whole thing is going on with alabasta and an uproar vivi gone missing like there's so many things mm -hmm. he cannot give the opposition a chance to go for a dub and right That's now, right. it's time for him to go and make a play and show why you are the most dangerous criminal in the world. Sabo That's has right. the attention right now, but let the streets know why you were the top That's dog right. and still are the top dog. So go That's make right. the move. Go say Sabo, whatever it is. 
but I'm hoping that's going to be what's going to come out of this phone call at the end of the yeah. day. I'm, I'm, I'm right there with you in regards to, like we talked about earlier, this is going to be what the... This phone call is going to lead into the domino effect of this final saga, right? Like, regardless of what happens, yes. this is going to directly lead into what happens later. And I'm really looking forward to seeing how the Marines retaliate regardless, right? Whether mm -hmm. it's like you said, and they actually invade Marijoa. What do they do? Do they call everyone back and try to go make a defense force up there? Do they, uh, do they put all hands on deck and be like, yo, somebody go get that flag nerd. Or yep. they find out the Kamabaka Queendom is their home base and, and they're they gonna try and attack it first or something yeah you know what i mean so it's like there's so many different ways that we can go about this but but like you said it, by the, the the most interesting thing for me about this next arc because i think it's gonna be a very a very short arc a palette cleanser a fun one an adventure and mm. i do think we're gonna meet somebody here either somebody we already know or you know man marble flames whatever it is yeah but it um I do believe that the cons the direct consequences of this conversation are already gonna start rattling once who gets to this next part. It's gonna be like whenever Ace fought Blackbeard and we found out about it when we got to this, uh or we as an audience found out about it in Thriller Bark. Yeah. But Luffy found out about it in, in Sabaudi. Yes, he did. Or in Amazon Lily, but um, yeah, yeah, Sabaudi yeah, yeah. is like whenever it was really like Yeah, yeah, yeah but Amazon Lily art. more so like yeah, when it really so took it, off, yeah. I, I think that's what we're about to see here. And like <sighs> It's just, bro, whenever you have a team like that, let's just say, hypothetical scenario, we do have this Sabo, Jewelry, Bonnie, and BB team. Which is just so crazy to think, like, that's it's an so actual crazy. thing that's happening. Like, the it's Sabo, VV, we figured, okay, maybe there's yeah. going to be something because we know there. But the fact that Bonnie just being there, too, I mean, we know yeah. how important she's going to be to the world government and 100%. the secrets and everything. Maybe it could tie into the Void Century, possibly, but... I believe so. Yeah. It's like, dude... At this point, because uh, yo, uh, Laz, I don't know if you saw it. Excuse me, dude. Mm. I got a, I got fake spoiled this, on this last chapter. I heard about this with the bull. <laughs> I think it was or something, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah dude. <laughs> so on Monday, I got hit with a fake spoiler that said um, Kobe defeats Hancock, and I spent the entire oh week being like, "How in the that flag is crazy. Did that happened?" <laughs> and so, and so, when I reached the end of the chapter, I was like, "Wait, wait, that that was fake." And but regardless. And now that really that really got me thinking though, because the entire week I was speculating in my head like, mm -hmm. how in the world is this happening? And, and now that it actually didn't happen, I'm like, okay, so when are we actually going to find out what happened with Kobe and Hancock? Mm -hmm. And is that going to have a direct connection here? Because we know obviously the SSG is about to make their move very very soon. Yep, there's very a time soon. now to go and do that. It might be now with uh, the Reds making a move and everything, right? Or even just now. for the Warlords and stuff. Yeah, it might be now because. Like, bro, at this point in time, you have to deal with Cross Guild, which is putting hits on your head. Yeah. And now you have to deal with the Revs, which the moment Akainu looked at, like, the, what the Flame Emperor is currently up to, he was like, nah, hold on, I gotta put a stop to this. This Green Bull keep, failed me. Fuji's failing me. I gotta do something myself. Mm -hmm. And so I'm so excited in, in regards to the Marines for them to put their foot down and be like, yo, man. We yeah. gotta put a stop to this, and whether they succeed, they succeed or fail, for me it's the intent. Like if a Kainu reaches out to whoever it is and is like, "Yo, we're putting out a fleet of like a hundred million SSG, put them out there. We're sending them here, 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 <laughs> and here. We're getting this done." Yeah, <laughs> like yo, I, I'd be so hyped. I'm like, "Yo, let's go. I'm down." Yeah, and I love the fact that even Akainu even said too, it's like you know, I picked a hell of an era to become the fleet admiral. But it's yeah. like if you want to staple yourself above the likes of the Sengoku's, the Kongs, and all that. I mean, what better way to stamp your authority than to really instigate and rattle the world itself by, you know, laying yeah. down the law, by having to control of the Marines, you know, having yeah. SSG being command to go out and do everything. Like, because people mm -hmm. don't realize, like, I know we talk about Blackbeard being like the final antagonist or even mm -hmm. him or something, but Akai, you know, there's a lot of baggage that needs oh, to still yeah. be taken care of with him. And, Absolutely. You know, when we do get him back on the forefront, it's going to bother me knowing that what happened with Ace and everything and having mm -hmm. to see him again, you know, mm -hmm. take a more of a major appearance now in the story. For sure. But uh, I do think, honestly, like going back to the thing with Dragon invading uh, Mary mm -hmm. if there's anyone that's going to be meeting him there, I truly think it could be him. Dude. And he, I think I would, and th I would and this just... will be him. This will be him saying, you got to come here and handle this. 
Oh my gosh. You yo. know what I'm saying? Cause my thing is yeah. it depends on what because and we don't know. It could be a Martian, could be whatever it could be. Mm-hmm. So like that thing could have whatever it has, whatever. But like oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it could have one of them. <laughs> so it's like we know with Makainu, it's like we know like going back to just roles of the whole, like there's a higher being up there and stuff. So if anything is gonna be to anyone's direction, their commands, that's gonna be him. And if you're gonna go and try and put anyone to go up against Dragon, and we look at the similarities in terms of whether it be like, you know, leadership or in terms of being adversaries and all that, Akainu fits the bill for it all. And we know there is some kind of history that's back there and everything. I think that's right. This is this is the opportunity right now to go and explore that. Why is it that Akainu feels this way about Dragon? You know, yeah. does Dragon have anything against Akainu? Because we haven't really gotten 100%. to see that side yet. That's right. And, and again, I feel like if we eventually get into you know dragon's past and understanding exactly That's what coming. made him get into the revolutionary army like this is all starting to feel like the questions we've been wanting to get answers out of that's right this is the opportunity to do that now like we can't go and that's shy right. away back to luffy as much as we love luffy and the straw hats yeah. it's like this is the time really to start setting up the platform for them to eventually yeah. jump in here and then try and make bro, the save bro bro honestly if we can just keep it focused I think I think it can be done less. Like in regards to doing a, so let's just say uh, Yakuza Zero, for example, right? Right, right. If right. if if we can actually balance and just keep these two, switch the perspectives, what, but at least exactly. like give me time enough for where it's not yes. losing much of it. Yeah. Yes, like so in this week's chapter, it made, it reminded me how how good Oda is at switching POVs when there's not so much happening, right? Because in mm-hmm. Onigashima, that was their problem is that there was so much happening that where every time we switch perspectives, <sighs> lot, it just yeah. got super clunky, you know? So, but in um in regards to uh right now, now that Cross Guild, w- w- that's that's done for the moment. Right now, the main two plot points that we have to cover, this Revolutionary Army thing and the Straw Hats. So mm-hmm. let's just say if we, if we were to continue to, you know, like Majimun Kiryu, Majimun Kiryu, we're going back and yeah, forth yeah, yeah. as as they have consequences on one another. I think we could have like a really interesting thing going on here, especially if, like I told you before, that interview with Oda, um, where he was talking about how he wants to have that um, that story with Luffy's birth the origins of the revolutionary army and that story with garp all come into the play in the story mm-hmm. and if there's any time for us to get that that the It'll like the here. combination of all of those is going to be it's going to be soon bro like yeah. especially with um the potential cuz listen to me like 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 you said earlier and I love the way you put it like yo the, the most wanted man in the world he has to put his foot down and be like yo I'm the big daddy and mm-hmm. i really hope that now that we got mihawk's bounty and all their bounties I look forward to seeing if this is going to be the moment where we just get a chapter dedicated to Revolutionary Army hype of like we see Sabo's bounty, we see how big of a threat he is, but then when we see Dragon's, Dragon's bounty, yeah, like, yeah. oh my goodness, and then Akainu's like, yo, I got, I got to go get him. I got. Yeah. He's, he's too dangerous. I, I, I'm honestly scared to find out what that number is going to be. Like if you have to put a number, because we're seeing numbers now fly across the board, and yeah. what we know with Roger. I mean, let's 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 say right now, does he have a higher bounty than Roger? I've always said that he that, that 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 he will. I I can understand if Oda doesn't want him to, because I do think Luffy surpassing Roger in bounty is going to be a really special chapter. Yeah. So if if he wants to keep it like specifically the five point six as being the highest bounty, I I I'm all down for it. However, he has been stated to be the most the most dangerous dude in the verse. Yep. So if you're the most dangerous dude in the verse. You might have to have the highest bounty, bro. And so, then, and my other thing I was gonna bring up too is because who was another individual that we knew forty years ago that uh, was walking right. along those kind of tidal waves and stuff that was rocks, big, big daddy rocks. And that's then right. it's like we, I've, as far as we know, he doesn't have a bounty that's been uh, revealed yet. So, yeah. if if we were to imagine right that if he has mm-hmm. something close to what Roger has, what would be? Yep. I think you know if if Dragon had something along the lines like it's close to Roger because at least it shows mm-hmm. us like his worth in terms of like you know the danger factor, his influence yeah. and everything because those are major keys. Not just your strength, but what have you done to acclimate that much bellies or berries right. or whatever you want to go with like on your head to be viewed mm-hmm. as like a real threat? So that the Marines are like, here, this is the amount that we're asking for. Go and get this guy. You know, right. so mm-hmm. it, it really does depend because with rocks, it's like there's so many things with the taboos and all that. I don't yeah, know if Dragon's one of those guys, but he definitely mm-hmm. does things in a way that it goes against what the world government and the I, Marines have in place. I do think that Dragon and Luffy are in a similar scenario in regards to their 
the, the, what they're represented by right now is both like completely against the celestial dragons and specifically instant messenger summer like like i've told you many times before i do believe dragon statue comes directly from the void century yeah. so when you look at only people from that time period know that though in the same way that only people from that time period are going to know the importance of joy boy and and the nika bounty poster yeah so that that connection to me automatically makes it to where yo Whenever we actually get to find out, or whenever, we, like you said, if we'll, we'll get that opportunity to get that glorious dragon instant messenger song conversation, mm -hmm. I, I am really, really, really curious on how is he going to go about that because this is the one in like you're not supposed to exist, and yet <laughs> yeah. we assume we assume that dragon the reason why he's doing all of this is because of your very existence. So mm -hmm. it's like what is what is there and I, I know we've always talked about the luffy's mom and the origin of the revolutionary army oh, potentially yeah, being whenever yeah. you found out all this stuff it's like mm -hmm. but if is is it really like dragon was inspired by the original person who freed slaves in nika and that's why he created the revs and now he's gonna come you know face to face with maybe the person who took out the original joy boy in this semester or whatever it is mm -hmm. like that that is just gonna that's like lore peace galore bro you know what it i mean is, yeah. like it's just it, it needs to happen yeah because it's like you would also have it to where other characters believe and so like for us like we probably are the some same assumption that uh teach is more unlikely influenced by the likes of rocks and that there yeah. is gonna be some kind of connection eventually between the two of them whether for like That's rocks facts. was his dad grandfather whatever it may be honestly because like whatever that lands into we're gonna see a connection from there and then even let's say if like you know the monkey family isn't in the same line of like you know joy boy and nika and stuff but there is like you know they were underneath them with the family of d and stuff because that's still going to be a whole thing when we get the ancient kingdom yeah and everything that's there but it does feel like in some ways that if he was influenced by the ancient kingdom and what he saw with joy boy and nika and he's the mm -hmm. one who's aware of these things because he had read up on stuff and learned these exactly. things over time then it does exactly. give him the opportunity to go after someone like him and even more so depending on what his connection was even prior to the revolutionary army because that is the big mystery what led him to mm -hmm. creating it so if he was able to figure out who him is then there has to be something deeper you know whether if he was a former right. cp0 agent or he has yeah. some kind of standing again he we always talked about his wife possibly being someone from the holy land or something like just yes if you have to throw so many different scenarios what exactly yeah. would be for for dragon's connection I, to that i honestly do believe Either Dragon himself figured this out, like you said, through being a high-ranking member of an intelligence agency where he was able to gather all of this. Um, similarly to like who's who blabbering, like maybe he met somebody who was blabbering one day, or he himself just found out the information and created the revs after that. Or in the process of him, so let's just say maybe there was a catalyst that made him, you know, go away from maybe was, let's just say he was like a former Marine, whatever it was. And in that process of figuring all that stuff out, I'm not going to throw out the possibility that Dragon got into contact with members of Ohara and was slowly trying to put the pieces together in his head mm -hmm. of what actually took place back then. Because let's just say that Dragon had the opportunity to speak with anyone, and not, not necessarily anyone that was on Ohara itself, but just individuals with that knowledge. If if they were truly killing everybody who has this knowledge and had this information, then and they considered them to be the, the biggest threat, then mm -hmm. why would the most dangerous criminal in the world not have that information as well? And so precisely yeah. th that that's why I believe that Dragon not only has the voice entry information, but he's gonna utilize the information the same way I expect Do Flamingo to utilize that information whenever he gets out of prison. Yeah. Which which is why I'm I'm like so I good bro. He's, yeah, he's still has that information with the national treasure he has too. So and it's much like, info, bro. Yeah, so and it's just like you know, it's one of those things where it's like you know we go back to the Sengoku moment in the Marine Fur when he reveals like the whole thing about Ace uh, being the son of yeah. uh, Roger. I feel like that's exactly. kind of what it might build up towards, where it's like I don't know they're gonna put up a live stream or something, and then Dragon mm -hmm. while he's talking on the like the throne with like because yeah. we always talked about this idea like Dragon sitting on the throne might be one of the hardest yeah. panels oh. Oda could ever do. So peak. ever. And it's like, yeah. can you imagine like having a live stream where you're sitting on the empty throne and you're revealing the, the ancient history of the world? And that's how we yeah. get like the arc of the voice intro or something like, that would be insane. 
<laughs> like if, yeah. if that was a play because right there and then dragon would be top three all time if he ever did something oh, like that it wouldn't even dude. be a question bro bro you just think we think about it, such a godly moment bro bro dragon is sitting on the throne m walks into the room we finally see who m is but in reverse to gear fifth we start off with the eyes first and it's a confirmation yeah. like dragon's like yeah, you know, my son has the same eyes of yours now. Oh my yeah. god, dude. And bro. then we slowly but surely get to see what Im looks Oh, bro. Because, dude, because you remember, because imagine, because we talked about the whole idea possibly like the mom being a celestial dragon. So, bro, can you imagine it's like, oh, so Luffy has your eyes after all? Like, it, it's something like that, bro. I, w I wouldn't be able to feel my ACL for the rest of my life. <laughs> like, I wouldn't be able to. That would, that, that's a Kiseki plot twist right there. That really that, would. That, that's just craziness. That, that that's really crazy. Oh my god. No, I was just uh, telling you, man. Like Oda could definitely pull something like that off, and even then, he could probably go above and beyond that. That's the thing about legit all this legit, stuff. Bro. Really and the scariest that. part about it, Laz, is that like you said earlier, we no longer have to be like, no, nah, it's gonna be the end of the series. We are in the end of the series. Yeah, We're it's, here, it's man. coming up. So it's like, time. whatever he's it's cooking time. right now, man, the spices have been put in. It's been put in the oven. He opened it That's two right. times just to make sure it looks good. It's about time to eat soon, man. No, it's it's time, bro. That that thing, it ain't meat. No, it, I, yeah, I know everybody eats their steaks different, right? But my my dog Oda's been cooking this for twenty five years. If that yeah. thing ain't well done by now, I don't know when it's gonna be done. You know what I mean? <laughs> hey man, it's gonna be the greatest two dollar steak I've ever had in my life. <laughs> facts, hard facts. Oh my god! But yeah, Yo. but, but honestly, regards this whole stuff now though with the revs, since we we really went, I, we can't even say it's off topic because uh, at the end of the day, this is all gonna come back to uh, what happened after in this chapter, but. Do we think yeah. that Oda's actually going to follow through with all of this in the next chapter? Or do we think Absolutely that... Absolutely not. Yeah, there you go. That's, that's, what, that's what I'm looking Absolutely for. Not. He's going to go right back to Luffy. We're going to go enjoy yep. Elbaf, whatever. And then we'll get yep. another breadcrumb, you know, 100 chapters I, from now. <laughs> I, I I do... I don't think we're going back to Luffy. Just like, I, I feel like we... We did a perfect way to end the Luffy stuff for a little bit. Maybe, maybe it's just for one chapter. I do think we're about to hit one of those reverie... Um, slash the end of dressrosa stretches where yeah for like two or three chapters we just switch over to something else uh that was non strat related and i do believe this is about to be our kind of you remember how we had the revolutionary army chapter was just them yeah, yeah. um and, the, and for the reverie stretch i do believe this is about to be that except we're gonna follow something else now what that is i'm not sure whether it's the kobe hancock stuff whether it's the ssg stuff whether it's the Blackbeard or what in the world is he going after stuff, whatever it is, I do think next chapter is not going to be focused on the Revs or the Straw Hats. Um, it's going to be on that. And then the following chapter or at the end of this next chapter, we're going to continue the the, the Sabo stuff with yeah. the Revolutionary Army. That's that's the way I see it. Yeah, it could it definitely play out like that. Because, again, we have to remember, too, there's a lot of perspectives we still need to go out and oh, see. Yeah for sure you know and uh yeah. even though this it would be nice to have like a a nice change of pace where it's like instead of just completely changing over to something else we can actually see uh -huh. it follow through before going off and uh, do that yeah but uh yeah, especially, love that especially yeah. especially with the whole stuff with luffy because it's like again we love the straw hats and everything i don't think there's not denial yeah. in that uh way of thought or thought yeah. process around that but it's like mm -hmm. with so many things still need to be done in this story and like the time sure. that we have left we don't know if it's gonna be three to five years or whatever exactly it's like we need to start getting these stuff out now otherwise it's yeah. like lost opportunities that so you, you can't get back plus oda is going into a palate cleanser arc he wants us excuse me to go in knowing something insane is happening in the background while we're having where we're just trolling for 10 chapters because i guarantee you whatever arc we're about to get to before we go to elbaf or whether elbaf itself is a transition arc whatever it is this next arc is going to be just oda at his most insane in terms of adventure he has yeah. been dying i'm sure to write this next arc in regards to this palette cleanser that he can just have so much fun with but in the same way that jaya zo and especially dave back fight ended mm -hmm. leading us into insanity afterwards i do believe that whatever this arc is going to be it's ending just like aokiji led us directly into water seven i do believe however this next arc ends it is going to lead us directly into elbaf whatever and with alongside that going back to what we're talking about earlier with them um, um with the Majima and Kiryu stuff, mm -hmm. I do believe whatever takes place there is also going to have direct consequences 
on the side of the Revolutionary Army as well. Like, I, I just I want to see him since, since it is our final time with One Piece, being able to see like how he can, how how many other things he can try, and I'm sure he's going to use his 25 years of experience here, being able to tell a story in a different kind i mean i want him, i want it to stay focused right like yeah, more yeah. than ever i want this to stay as focused as possible mm -hmm. but if there's any point where we can stay focused while also telling two stories at once well oda's telling 50 at once but two specific <laughs> yeah, yeah. stories at once those dude two, i think yeah. those are the two right now because they are the most important for taking us into the final saga so yeah like you said we could potentially really this next chapter could be an adventure chapter we continue adventure piece that's all fine and dandy but at this point, it's like, yo, after this next arc, it's going to be insanity. So it's like, yeah. I would rather he ha give us a reverie stretch of bread come, bread come, bread come, Honestly, bread come, bread come, bread come. Four or five chapters, man. Like, that's literally and, all I ask. And you and, can get and, a lot and, done. People will realize you can get so much done in a chapter. Look at the reverie. We're still talking about the reverie. Yeah. You know, like, it's five chapters. Yeah. So it's like, I, I would have, I would rather have one of those stretches. And then Oda goes on an adventure and then the moment that we get out of that arc, that's whenever the stuff that happened before starts directly connecting into the stuff that with the Straw Hats. And now mm -hmm. we have it to where we're both emotionally connected to the stuff that's happening around the world because it has a direct correlation to what's happening with the Straw Hats. And that's whenever it starts booming and the final saga is completely underway. So mm -hmm. I, 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 for the next couple chapters, just let me have all the around, all around the world material. Give me Blackbeard, yeah. give me Revs. Give me all of that, Honestly, and then yeah. we go adventure piece, and it will be the most glorious time ever. You know, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'm definitely here for all of that, man. Because like as we were saying before, because the time that we have remaining and everything, like there's so yeah. much stuff that needs to get done. So if he's able to do again, because I'm always, we've always been a big uh, believer in innovation and not uh, stagnation when mm -hmm. it comes to any anything when it comes to video games, when it comes to writing and everything. Like yeah, because at least it shows that over the course of time, 25 plus years. Oda's trying yeah. to do different things that not only keeps One Piece relevant, but also yeah. makes it as expansive as it possibly be, because that's what it that's is. Correct. It's a massive story, not just in the yeah. sense of like, you know, the storytelling or the world itself, yeah. but the ideas that get put into it that make it sure. so grand. So yeah, no, if he definitely yeah. goes into that avenue of like, you know, switching the perspectives and getting to see what's happening from the Rev side to the Straw Hat side that coincides and leads into eventually pass El Baff into whatever Lodestar, the final mm -hmm. war, all that. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm here for all of that, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's going to be an exciting time because this is going to be his, because you remember the last time that we, and I know the, the three year thing is cap, but oh, in absolutely. Mind, we know that for fact. <laughs> <laughs> everybody knows that, but he, um, uh, it's interesting how Oda believes that this arc in his mind is going to take as long as the Paramount War Saga took. So it's like five arcs, all of different lengths, that all directly lead to one another. Mm -hmm. So what we're about to have, like we were saying earlier, is an arc that where one leads to the other, one leads to the other, one leads to the other, one leads to the other. So this is going to be one of those interesting scenarios where because there's going to be so many returning characters, we're going to be having a blast as fans. Go Because it's going to be like One Piece Stampede, except spread out. Where in that first arc, maybe we don't see that many things because it's going to be Oda with the Straw Hats and just the Straw Hats for the first time in so long. Mm -hmm. And then maybe we'll meet character here, character here, returning character. But after that, bro, it's off limits. Like when we go to Elbaf, we could see returning, 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 returning. Yeah. And we'll be happy because we're like, yo, these are our goats. Yeah. And then the following the following time, returning, returning. And it's not just on our side. Whenever we cut over to Cross Guild and we see mm -hmm. like we, there's the big theory, um, Doflamingo joins him or whatever. Yeah. Like, oh, that's another great connection. We we'll go to Revolutionary Army. We see meeting up with Vivi or maybe like Hancock and them are all creating some sort of things. So it's like yeah. all these different storylines are going absolutely nuts. Returning characters and now joining their own factions. And then eventually when we get to the final saga, that's where all those narratives come together. And it's just going to be goatness it's gonna be like marineford again except times four on a far you know? <laughs> different scale like we thought like if this is the war that he's talking about oda where it's like it's gonna make marineford look cute or yeah. look minuscule in comparisons and stuff yeah. i mean my god when you really look at the factions and everyone that's gonna be there exactly. that's like that's gonna be an all-time war and it's like we don't yeah. know what like again with him like what we have like we still have like the holy knights we even yes. brought up two, and it's like we don't know what these things are. Like, oh, the Holy Knights will Yo. take care of this. Like, what, what, what Holy Knights? No. <laughs> like, Lads, bro, as a Bleach fan, 
the moment I heard that, I was like, yo, Royal Guard? Like, yeah, are we that's what I mean, Royal yeah, bro. Guard? Like, and you the... tell me Dragon's about to pull up, like, Juha, and just oh start boxing God. him, bro? I'd be like, yeah! That would be so <laughs> crazy if <laughs> all of a sudden we have these, like, Yonko Commander, like, monsters just chilling in the Holy Land that we have no idea about and stuff. Like, I, I mean, again, we could put any skill on them, but it's like, when you throw that kind of name there, and we already know Im's already scary, it's like, for sure, anything in affiliation is probably, like, not nah. of this realm like honestly yeah for sure you know are they from gehenna like we don't know <laughs> like, <laughs> they're, they're literally not of this realm like they're, <laughs> they're part of the 77 demons or whatever it is now that's what one of them is the wandering bro oh my god that, i think that's a good place if we could cut it off out there otherwise we'll get we'll get taken out we'll definitely get taken out i, I hear the going <laughs> like, yo, yo, give, give, give me give me a second let me um let me let me close the door quick. oh okay, no worries yep yeah. <laughs> That was a CS perfect. <laughs> oh my god. Da, 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 da. Oh man, dude. All right, I'm back. All right, yeah. <laughs> that was actually good. I mean, there's just so much actually. We could have actually yep. uh, cut this into like multiple videos, which is crazy. Yo, facts. No, that that was fun. That was, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, but <laughs> we'll, we'll do the close off then for it. So though, recon though, I appreciate though uh, coming on here and just talking about go piece on me. If this is the format we can definitely do more of these in the future and the future mean like you know sooner than later and probably sooner yep. than sooner i mean honestly this is probably going to be the way to go because you know for people that don't know this and if you don't then i'm surprised but recon and i whenever we talk about one piece these conversations go on until like the eons of like the next day possibly like to the point where like we shouldn't be up there's probably noises ghosts things whatever may be out there that, silva's pancakes the, what, what, silva's pancakes <laughs> shout out to my boy silva all these things that are occurring in the nighttime and stuff that we shouldn't be you know hearing whatsoever but we're so enthralled in talking about one piece and that's really where our love for the series comes from just talking about the many things that we look forward to seeing and all that and honestly if you guys are interested in seeing more of these kind of conversations take place in this format I can promise you right now, man, Recon and I can probably get a lot more of these out uh, sooner than later. So if you're interested, let us know down in the comments if you want to see it, not just on my channel, but also on Recons as well. We will try to get bypass him, uh, Aragog, <laughs> all of them and stuff just to That's make right. it happen. <laughs> but uh, if you guys did enjoy this, of course, please leave a like on the video. Subscribe if you haven't already to myself and, of course, with King Recon. Recon, again, thank you so much for coming through and... Uh, I look forward Always to seeing uh, the next uh, discussion that we're going to have, which will probably be very soon, honestly. Yes, sir. <laughs> but again, like, comment, subscribe. If you guys enjoy the content that was here. Uh, if you want to be part of the weekly experience when it comes to my coverage of One Piece Week in Week Out, as well as with King Recon, links down in the description below to subscribe to the both of us. And uh, we'll catch you guys in the next video. Have an awesome, awesome day. Bye-bye.